Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I just star mindset Rich forever Yes, my lord, warm welcome. Yes, in love. Honorable Prophet Brian from the Black Star Associate, Black Star Movement Association. Warm welcome again, my lord. Greetings, Majesty. Blessed love. Yes, sir. There is no stranger to the platform. Um, give thanks again. Yes, Majesty. Give thanks to the high presence and you know, giving I this royal moment and pleasure of the, you know, express I and myself, Prophet Brian, otherwise known as Rasayam, Black Star Movement Association, Black Strength and Power, and I'm also affiliated with the EABIC, Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, True Church of Divine Salvation, and um, just here in the Royal Afro Ghana. West Africa, just full joy on the earth and having a marvelous time here, uh, making the San Kufa back to the motherland, um, you know, connecting with the brothers and sisters here on the continent who's been born here and fellow peers of I and I brothers and sisters who have returned over the years. I've um, met up with some virgins, some here 34 years some 14 years and counting um, some acquaintance that's been here two three years now so various degrees of different time periods that um, ones over the years have made their migration um, if you haven't known uh, it's not my first time communicating with uh, honorable Ivy stars on the mindset program great program bringing various information having to do with uh, the black people and the world in general, Jamaica, the Caribbean, you know, and just championing the cause for a dialogue, much needed dialogue, uh, lending to reparations and repatriations and these things, and just the conscious light. Black Star Movement stands for the similar goals, so this is what sparked my interest to connect with the Honorable Aja Stars, and uh, it was great to know that the man linking up here in Ghana. This is my third time in Ghana. Uh, the longest length I've been in Ghana so far is roughly about eight months. Uh, yes, and over that period I've managed to acquire some property and looking into some development going on. Uh, the Black Star Movement it stands for returning to Africa with a practical approach. The inspiration from the Honorable Marcus Mazea Garvey as stated with the black five point star a lot of ones have adopted that star over the years including ghana it's on the national flag there the red gold and green ethiopia red gold and green for sovereignty beating the mussolini uh, with the ethiopic war there ethiopia versus mussolini and a, the rainbow colors were spread throughout uh, pre-independence so a lot of the nations adopting the red, gold, and green as a result of Ethiopia's sovereignty within Africa. And uh, we have Ghana once again that has the red, black, and green. So as a born Jamaican, you know, and Marcus Garvey is a hero within the Rastafari, the Ayana of Boba Shanti, uh, the man is a God prophet. Because we know that the Lord of hosts is his name and God take on various forms within the flesh, the humanity, to bring about certain truths, bring about certain truths in reality that I and I can see and experience for ourselves, uh, the personification of the Most High God, then, if you will. So, throughout all these missions, uh, it's inspirational, 
So as a follower, we try to follow the lead of the Most High's Imperial Majesty Al Selassie. Uh, you know, God is King, our royal priest, holy priest King Emmanuel, same way God is priest, and our honorable John Marcus Masaya Garvey, God is prophet, and you can't forget um, the pristine and royal goddess of the earth, Empress Menen, goddess as female, feminine, uh, the black woman of creation. So we give thanks to all the manifestation of the Most High God uh, there in the whole family that gives I and I all the teachings to come to a fullness, to inhalate, to take the word, sound, the utterance, the philosophies and the opinions and incorporate into our lives to bring about our redemption and our freedom. Black Star Movement stands for bringing about the education of the people also through the consciousness, truths and rights and what we come to know as Rastafari through the years of freedom, redemption, struggle and a large part of that is returning here to the motherland Africa. Oh, 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 oh does one um, join up or be a part of Black Star Movement? Well, the Black Star Movement has been active since July 2011 after my return from Ethiopia. That's when I decided to rise this, rise this initiative and mission because um, I see the need of a certain like, a certain mindset and basically practical, more meaningful approaches towards going towards Africa. Um, in a lot of the sense, the push to Africa has become somewhat of a dream where we talk about it, sing about it, but I see there's a lack in within the connection of the practical means of getting on a plane, networking with fellow brothers and sisters on the land, and making that connection uh, with Africa. So that is a need um, we try to fill through just manifesting the works, coming here myself, um, documenting certain things as the eyes do in uh, Honorable Aja Star. For Black Star Movements, uh, you can always email at blackstarmovementsinfo um, dot, no, at um, gmail.com blackstarmovementsinfo dot info at gmail.com and also we have the YouTube channel you can just type in the search within the YouTube that's a Black Star Movement Association. And you're just looking for the Black Star surrounded by the B-L-A-C-K representing the Black. And, um, you know, let us guide our own destiny. Uh, that is one of the motto, as well as Black Strength and Power. So, other than that, just going to and fro, traveling. And ones I might know in my personal circle, um, that's how you basically could get in touch with myself. Uh, Prophet Brian, otherwise known as Raphael. Yes, so, go on, sir. Oh, and as well, I frequent um, the, the, the mindset programs. If you get in touch with the Honorable Elijah Star, um, you know, you could connect that way as well. Uh, we stay in touch, even though he's in UK, we're here in Africa, sometimes I'm on the American continent, if it ain't the Caribbean, Canada. Um, and here in Africa as well but uh, it's all about creating that network so we keep in touch and build one another as conscious black people so um, since since the I been in Ghana Zim, what, what, what is the I perception of um, the Rastafari community here you know what what what, what is what is that like, especially Bobo Shanti, and I is Bobo. Yes, Majesty. What, 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 what a vibe there, you know, do the I see Bobo's around since the I've been here? Well, honestly speaking, as an honest brother, my lord, I only could talk the truth and the reality of my experience and my mind. Before even coming to Ghana, um, I've heard the history specifically within Bobo Shanti of the delegation of the Honorable Right, you know, Priest Emmanuel, his sons and some of the angels, prophets and priests within the order of the EABIC, Melchizedek Order. And um, over the years, decades, they have 
you know, repatriated to Africa and in, um, I believe Ghana specifically. But uh, total here in Ghana, um, there should be some sort of settlement there. I've seen videos of it in the past, but honestly, I haven't been there since my time I've spent here. And actually, I haven't encountered very few Baba Shanti. I would say just one, and it's on the shores of Labadi Beach. Um, there, I've met uh, Turban Seal and Baba Shanti brethren that explain that he's Baba Shanti, a prophet Michael, wears his turban, and he sells some arts and crafts there at Labadi Beach. And he was kind of giving me the rundown myself of like. There was a settlement up in Toto. It started out great, but over the years it diminished. Toto or Tafu? Pardon me, Tafu, Tafu. I stand corrected, Tafu. So uh, thank you for that correction, brother. But yeah, I was at Tafu, and um, I think it was 10 acres. And unfortunately, a portion, maybe half of that, ended up being sold for one reason or another and uh, the attendance at the service kind of turned down he himself used to frequent there and said it was very lovely a lot of service and sabbath holding keeping going on but um since then it has been dwindled down some idrin scattered here and some there during my stay here so far i met up with some rasta idrins here and there and um you know traveling africa before this is one of the major things that i've noticed within either Ethiopia, Uganda, or here in Ghana, and other places basically conversing with other ones. It's the, the lack of unity, my lord. We boast of the unity out in the West, we sing about it, and when we arrive in Africa, it seems like the unity where we needed most of all is lacking. But there's a Rastafari there, there's a Bingi there, there's a Baba there. I really didn't see any real prominent settlement here in Africa. Uh, we come on our own accord, whether it's to repatriate or migrate or just make a pilgrimage. But I yet to see uh, on the right scale a settlement of Rastafari, whether they're here or not. But that sort of um, arrangement with the government and the ones here for Rastafari specifically, even black conscious people. Though there's a few settlements here and there, a Sable in Cape Coast, other ones taking the initiative to set up a settlement, acquire land for them and their peoples, loved ones. But uh, within Rastafari specifically, I would say that is something that is very needed and lacking. And we're scattered here in Ghana, and as far as I see it, Ethiopia and other ways, we're scattered as well. That collective security is not needed. There. It's not there. And we're here amongst various tribes, different tongues and languages. And um, we ourselves coming in as the Black Diaspora, Rastafari. So, let, 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 let me ask you something, my lord. Yes. If, if, if Jah forbid and you were to get sick, who could you call upon here? Well, for myself here, you know, as an adventurer, as a warrior, um, I just put my faith and trust in the Almighty, uh, uh, my Lord. Ghana here has its okay system. Um, if you were to take sick, you could call, I believe it's 611 or whatnot. Um, better so in the capital of Accra than maybe on the outskirts of Great Accra. Um, I'm not talking about emergency call out for ambulance. I'm just talking about who could you call as a friend or as a bubble or as a rasta. Well, in terms of bubble, I don't have a one. I pray thee. I don't have a bubble I I give thanks to the I follow the name as a bubble to love. connect with. But there is the greater Rastafari community of Naya Bingi 12 tribe same way. So I personally know a one here. Um, that came here and he's been here roughly two years now so i call and would connect with that region here and there but we live hours apart but in terms of conversing and just touching base we don't link all the time every day sometimes not even every week every two weeks but i know i have a one's number that i could contact and the greater Ghanaian community 
ones that I have met their acquaintance and become friend with and you know some closer than some uh, within my local neighborhood of where I'm staying there shops that I frequent to shop for my groceries and maybe hang out now and then for the evening these ones I have their contact I've become acquainted with and though they're not Rastafari I've received the love from them where I could say that they are Ghanaian friends of mine so I would be in contact with them as well what Rasta need to be doing in, in, in Africa right now, what Rasta should be doing because I see I see more continental Rastas that doesn't really understand the whole the principle of, of the movement itself, the fundamentals of, of the movement of Rastafari. We see continental Rastafari Virgin and history do not understand that fundamental part of of, of, of the movement. Or oh, 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 you see what well, what Rasta should be doing here? Well, honestly, as you know, sometimes I could be said it's critical, but um, conscious criticism um, is something that should be welcomed among I and I. Because, as a, in my opinion, we're still in our infant stages as Rastafari. Our central homeland and headquarters um, is Africa. Though Rastafari has arisen from out of the West, our consciousness came to us as diaspora and scattered to the four corners of the earth, specifically the Caribbean, Jamaica, but um, the spirit, that is where it has ascended as a dove unto I and I, and we rise from there. But we can't forget that part of that spirit is to connect and get the conscious where we want to reconnect back San Kufa, return home to our motherland Africa, and that's where we are strongest. So Rastafari, not just the ones born at home, but in general, um, if I will, I would say the fundamental of Rastafari, um, within the culture it's not lacking per se, but with individuals that take up the culture it's lacking. Because Rastafari, if you say Rastafari, you're talking about the man himself, his imperial majesty, Ayla Selassie I, crowned in 1930 in November in Ethiopia, with Empress Men and the Goddess. And that is our God and King personified and incarnated within our time, fulfilling prophecy um, through scripture and just the historical greatness of Ethiopia throughout the River Nile. And the Honorable Marcus Garvey, uh, one of our first Rasta within Jamaica, within our culture. Um, notwithstanding to say watching the hair that was locked, Marcus Garvey plays a large role within Rastafari bring in the whole consciousness of the black ideal looking to the east for crowning as the crowning of a black king you know and this is in direct you know counter reaction to the western greco-roman religious aspects that we received through the slavery not by free will but by force so this is giving us a chance to think for ourselves coming into a consciousness and recognizing the black God and goddess in flesh and to basically see God through our own spectacles. So the Honorable John Marcus Garvey bring forward these notions, concepts and understanding and it helped give birth to Rastafari. Leonard Howell, which was a Garveyite and various other ones within that fundamental of development, redemption, economics, you know, these things are fundamental within Rastafari and over the decades it seems like it has dwindled um, maybe leaning on the religion aspects of the spiritual sometimes religious culture more and as a result of us being in the Caribbean we're disconnected from our land and a large part of our culture comes from the land as well so within Africa and Rastafari in general the fundamentals I would say um, would be sticking to the roots of what is Rastafari, the fundamentals. While we hear a lot of music, the roots of Rastafari is not so much roots rock reggae, it's not so much your favorite entertainer, dance hall, or culture reggae that you're hearing. Rastafari existed from 1930s. Reggae music, more so the late 1950s, 60s going on. 
um, during the independence period, you know, Jamaica uh, received independence, what was it, 1962? And um, most of the other nations, even within Africa, it's around the 1960s, Ghana here is 1957. But um, outside of Haiti, uh, mostly the colonial nations, predominantly with the black populace, um, it was in the 60s that we rose to our independence almost simultaneously. But um, the teachings of His Imperial Majesty, the philosophies and opinions of Marcus Mazzeo Garvey, uh, the lifestyle and the order of Melchizedek through the EABIC, which is the priestical order of the Most High God, you know, Melchizedek order, priest of the Most High God, and you know, Christ, Christ is with us. Manilo, Black Christ is with us, and uh, just the teachings of praise, holiness to the Most High, um, ceremonial order that is unique to I and I as Rastafari, but it's still fundamentally, fundamentally the African culture as well. You have the chanting of the drums, the clapping and the singing, and if you would go to Africa throughout, that is mostly how Africa reverence. Um, uh, the gods, our gods, our ancestors, it's through singing, ceremony, attire and dress code, so we have that. The look within Bobo Hill is no different from the Ethiopian Kiawedo orthodoxy uh, within the nation as you see how they praise and go about their days, even though they're Christian, but it's an orthodox meaning the original way of doing things method, so they hold more to an Old Testament uh, versus just a New Testament version of scripture and uh, their practice is evident. They wear turbans, they wear robes, um, uh, quite a few things that is fundamental and it could be found in I and I too. So if I and I just stick to the foundation of the Honorable Marcus Mesaya Garvey's Imperial Majesty Allah Selassie and Empress Menen, Black Man, Black Woman and our Holy Priest, um, we should be fine. We could reinforce that with scripture, history, and the love of nature. And this is where Rastafari need to unite back on. And this is what we could all agree to. Because the books are at, we have access to all of we have access to each other to the selected speeches, um, the Kebra Negas, the Feta Negas. These are fundamental within uh, Rastafari culture. So once we're educated formally within what is Rasta, these are points that we could tie together. Um, as, he, as, as a people versus you hear a uh, unique way over here a unique way over here a specific lingo over here a specific lingo over there and then sometimes there's a disconnect because it brings a whole lot of differences based off the different heights smash that subscribe button see you on the next video I just thought the mindset